We are in a time where there is a potential, I believe very small, that World War III could break out between Russia and the United States. Isn't it amazing that the more things change, the more they stay the same? First is tragedy, second is farce. Allow me to go into a little bit more detail about that. It is very clear from anyone who will take an honest look at the situation that the conflict between Russia and the United States is an inter-imperialist conflict. Both of them are competing for a market for energy resources. The blowing up of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is directly related to that, to stop shipments of fuel to Germany. What we have is a bit of a complex situation where the moneyed interests of Russia are going up directly against the moneyed interests of the United States. This is a capitalist war. With the wealth of the elite in Russia facing off against the wealthy elite in the United States. And this is also tied up with the entire geopolitical situation of the United States empire declining. Now some people would straight up just have you believe that either Russia bad or U.S. bad. Now well, the U.S. is bad. There's no denying that. But to simply paint Russia as some kind of altruistic entity that's fighting for freedom or rights or just simply against the U.S. empire so the world can be a better place is incredibly naive and frankly outright stupid. Russia is a capitalist country. It is fighting for its share of the world's profits just as every country does and is now doing so. And in this particular situation with the invasion of Ukraine, the U Russia is trying to counter U.S. offensive measures inside of Europe, attempting to subdue or even destroy Russia. It was made a guarantee that NATO would never be a would never take Ukraine as a member, so that there would not be a NATO country, you know, not so there'd be some kind of space between NATO. And Russia. Well, Ukraine started violating that. There was an overthrow of a pro-Russia government inside the country and replaced with a pro-US one. And then there were talks of putting NATO into a country that the US and NATO, US being the leader of NATO, had already certified would not take place. The only purpose for doing that is to surround isolate and place in a militarily disadvantaged position, Russia. There is no other reason to do that. It has nothing to do with trying to protect the United States. It has everything to do with trying to suppress Russia. It always has been. That's why it existed even during the Cold War. That was the entire purpose of NATO. Of course, the Soviet Union now no longer exists, but NATO remains as a force to make sure that it remains the influential hegemonic power within Europe and done so by instigating Russia on numerous occasions including the shelling of Donbass and Lugansk for eight years killing mass amounts of civilians that the mainstream media simply refused to report on. But this by no means suggests that Russia is some kind of altruistic player here. They're out for themselves. They're out for their own energy markets the same as the U.S. is, and to simply just paint them as being saviors of anti-imperialists just because they're against the United States is ludicrous. Being allied to the United States does not make you one of the good guys. And the inverse is also true. Just because you're against the United States doesn't automatically mean that you're part of some kind of altruistic kind of anti-imperialist collective. That's not the case. And it's nothing more than fantasy thinking to suggest that somebody automatically is because of it. Now I know when you ask people who are insanely pro-Russia if they believe that, they'll say no. But they turn around and do it and take anything that is anti-US as automatically being a good thing. 
This is all very much tied to the rise of hard right-wing sentiment within so-called leftist communities. Of course, I'm referring to the MAGA crowd and the uh, American patriotic socialists, which largely don't, the latter, of course, largely not existing anymore. But it's right there. Very right-wing ideas, and then going and supporting right-wing governments claiming that they're somehow anti-imperialist. And this ties in very much to something that, you know, that was put forward in third world as theory. That in times of crisis, the first, first world, the advanced industrialized nations, do not tend towards revolution. They tend towards fascism. And we saw that. We saw that with Germany. We saw that for a bit with the UK, with the sudden conservative shift. We saw it with the election of Donald Trump. We saw it with the election of um, Javier Bolsonaro to some degree. Though Brazil is mainly a third world country, it, 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 many areas are still highly influential and even have a second world status. But we see that. And even these so-called leftists are all turning towards the right. MAGA communism, a, an idea that makes absolutely zero sense. The biggest Twitch streamers of the so-called left, Destiny and Vosh, tend to hold very right-wing positions and end up supporting the Democratic Party. We've got, you know, supposed progressive forces like Jimmy Dore and uh, the other kind like that all of a sudden pushing like right-wing even conspiracy theory ideas. We've got, uh, you know, other ones I can't remember his name, the one, uh, the one that's married to Crystal Ball, end up pushing towards the, the Democratic Party, all of them turning right wing. And some of them were right wing to begin with, pushing towards the Democratic Party, because that is what happens in the first world. This is something that I've been saying for more than a decade. They're going to have to admit that, that in the end, they are going to push right wing. Because that is what happens. They always want back their high privileged position. Their, uh, in many cases, the post-war Norman Rockwell painting BS. They want that. Or when you get to the more liberal side, it's a greater slice of the corporate pie not an actual reorganizing of society in general. Well, look at that. First world people will push for reform before they'll push for revolution. And not just that they'll push one before the other, but they will actively oppose revolution in order to push reform. That's why, despite claims that somehow there's going to be a revolution in America, which they've been saying for over 100 years, no such thing has taken place. In fact, the United States is far more likely to descend into a racial civil war than it is to actually go into revolution. It would be great if it, if it was leaning towards revolution, but it is not. And any idea that somehow it is, is complete and utter nonsense. And that's the objective situation that we face today. And it would be nonsense to claim otherwise. We do have to have a proper material analysis of what's going on in the world if we are to try to confront it. And simply living in some delusion that somehow Russia good, or yeah, the American people are going to rise up, you know, any day now, as we've been hearing for more than a century, it's just ludicrous. And we need to do a lot better than this. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.